So this is a 56-year-old woman who uh, presented to her gynecologist with urinary frequency and um, some abdominal bloating. Um, she reports otherwise that she's been able to maintain her normal activities. Her past medical history is significant for hypertension that's controlled on a diuretic. Abdominal ultrasound showed a complex mass in the right pelvis that measured 4.5 by 5.0 by 7.5 centimeters. Physical exam showed a fluid wave uh, on her abdomen, so she was diagnosed with ascites, and her CA-125 was 622. She was referred to a gynecologic oncologist for further evaluation and workup, and they performed a CT scan of the, pa of the pelvis and the abdomen that showed a complex pelvic mass confirming what we saw on the ultrasound. Uh, it showed uh, ascites and a mental cake as well. Um, uh, no other peritoneal lesions uh, were identified, however. Based on these findings, she was scheduled for surgery, and she underwent a complete resection um, with meaning no residual disease at all. So she, she didn't have any residual at the end of this. We call that R0. She then received six cycles of chemotherapy consisting of carboplatinum every three weeks uh, with an AUC of six, and she underwent weekly paclitaxel receiving uh, 80 milligrams per meter squared, and that went on for six cycles. She had an excellent response with her CA-125 normalizing at 10. So she was doing very well all along this time. She then uh, was in surveillance, being seen every three months for the first two years. And it was almost two years out where she represented um, uh, with symptoms consistent of abdominal bloating once again. She had some distension, some early satiety, and she was more tired. She had fatigue and complained of having to take more frequent naps during the day. Um, unfortunately, her CA-125, which had, again, natured under 10, was found to be 330. So this triggered scanning, so she had CT scan that showed peritoneal carcinomatosis and small volume ascites. Uh, she was thus diagnosed with platinum-sensitive recurrent ovarian cancer. Uh, at this point, she was started on uh, carboplatinum paclitaxel with bevacizumab. So the carboplatinum was at an AUC of 5, the paclitaxel was 175 milligrams per meter squared, um, and, and that was given every three weeks, and the bevacizumab was administered at uh, 15 milligrams per kilogram. She uh, did very well. After two cycles of therapy, though, uh, she was found to have grade 2 hypertension. Uh, her blood pressure was elevated to 156 over 94. At this point, um, we were able to control that by uh, just simply adding an ACE inhibitor in, in addition to her baseline diuretic that she received. So um, that was able to be controlled with just that intervention. And she continues on treatment at this point, doing very well and tolerating therapy well. So when you, when you think about this patient, and I, I always think of, of ovarian cancer, of sort of being on a timeline or a spectrum, um, she's highly platinum sensitive being that it's been over two years since her original disease um, was diagnosed and she's had no intervening treatment. So she's done quite well. So there's some things about this that are very promising. So there are things about this case that are troubling and one being that she represented with uh, a fairly widespread disease, so small volume disease widely distributed. And that certainly is more difficult. One of the things you certainly think about in a patient who presents this late is the role of interval cytoreduction. Would there be value in taking her back to the operating room? And so that's certainly something that would be considered in a patient like this. The things that sort of speak against that, though, are the fact that she has ascites and the fact that she has multiple recurrences in terms of number of sites. Her timeline is perfect for considering taking her back. Her performance status, uh, same. Um, her comorbidities, all those things would say, you know, take, take her back. So in my, in my estimation, she's sort of in that gray area of, of how much uh, benefit she would have from going back. The patients that clearly benefit the most are the ones with very long intervals, such as we've seen here, and patients with uh, more isolated disease. Uh, also, there's, there are some studies that have suggested large volume ascites is associated um, with patients that do not do as well with interval cytoreduction. So these are some important things that you need to consider in, in this patient. In terms of prognosis, I think there's several things to think about. Uh, one is her platinum-free or treatment-free interval, and then um, again, 
her volume of disease and the sites of disease. So a couple things that are very promising, but a couple things that are troubling. So it's, it's a bit of a guarded uh, prognosis. It's unlikely that we will be able to cure her uh, at this point. Occasionally, you'll have patients who do recur with an isolated mass, in which case your chances for a long-term remission or cure are higher. Um, basically, recurrent ovarian cancer is extremely difficult to cure.